Hello guys. Now let's begin with the new chapter that is gastrointestinal physiology. Now in this video, let's start from the basics. First, we will discuss about the layers of the GIT. GIT is just like a tube, right? Okay, from mouth to anus, it's just like a tube which is twisted. Now, what are the layers in the GIT? Please concentrate, guys, here. Your GIT is made up of four layers. Or I can say there are four layers in the GI wall. What are the four layers? The innermost layer. See, this layer, actually, this is the lumen where the food passes. Now, the innermost layer, okay, which I am pointing right now, it is called as a mucosa. Okay, so mucosa is the innermost layer. Now, surrounding the mucosa, you are having submucosa. Okay, this is the layer of submucosa. So, mucosa, submucosa. Now, after submucosa, are you able to appreciate this muscular layer? Okay, this is the muscular layer. Now, what is the name of this muscular layer? It's called as muscularis. So, the innermost layer is mucosa. After that, there is submucosa and there is muscularis layer. Now, the last layer is the covering. It's nothing but serosa. Okay, actually serosa is a connective tissue which is the outermost layer covering all the mucosa, submucosa and muscularis. Now here, I want you to know some important points. What are they? Now mucosa was further divided into. Okay, what actually is mucosa? It have epithelial layer. Okay, the epithelial layer, lamina propria and muscularis mucosae. Now this word is important. Muscularis mucosae. See, the actual muscularis layer is different. Muscularis mucosae is different. Okay, why I am saying this is because, see this muscularis layer, okay, it helps in peristalsis, it helps in GI motility. But this muscularis mucosae, it does not have any role in GI motility. Okay, so never like you know confuse, muscularis mucosae is a part of mucosal layer of the stomach. And muscularis is separate layer which helps in peristalsis. Okay, now after this, if you can appreciate, see, in the muscularis region, in the muscularis region, as well as in the submucosal region, are you able to appreciate these uh, nerve plexus? See, these yellow color things, these yellow color network of nerves are nothing but the nerve plexus. There is a plexus which is present in the submucosa, which is present over the submucosa. And these nerve plexus are also going and innervating the muscles in muscularis. Now, what are the names of these nerve plexus? So, the first nerve plexus, which is present in the submucosal region, okay, this yellow color fibers, see, they are called as submucosal plexus or Meissner's plexus. So, where exactly Meissner's plexus is present? Meissner's plexus is present in submucosa. What it is innervating? See, these nerves, they are innervating glands. So, the glands in submucosa are innervated by the Meissner's plexus. So, Meissner's plexus is helping in GI secretions by stimulating the glands in the submucosa. Okay. And there is a plexus which is going to the muscularis layer. Now, what is the name of this plexus? This is called as, this plexus is called as myenteric plexus. My means myo, means muscles. So, the plexus going to innervate the muscles is called as myenteric plexus or r back plexus. Okay. Myenteric plexus or r back plexus is innervating muscularis layer, helping in GI motility. So, the two take home points are submucosal plexus or mesonous plexus helps in GI secretions. Myentric plexus or arbax plexus helps in GI motility. Okay. And all the time, don't ever forget, muscularis mucosa is not associated with peristalsis. Okay. Muscularis propria. Okay. Muscularis propria means this layer, this muscle layer, which includes the circular muscles and longitudinal muscles. That helps in GI motility. Now, having said that, let's see these points also. Meissner's plexus or submucosal plexus helps in GI secretions. Myentric plexus or arbax plexus helps in GI peristalsis. Now, see, as we are discussing about the nerve innervations, how these nerves are coming, what exactly are these nerves? See, this myentric plexus and Meissner's plexus, together they are called as enteric nervous system. Okay, there are almost 100 million neurons are there in the GI tract. There are so many neurons. So, we call this enteric nervous system as the little brain. Now,
Now, from where these neurons came? It's see to understand that I need to tell you some basic points. Actually, if this is your GAT, if this is your GAT, normally there are these cells called as neural crest cells. Neural crest cells have migrated and they got settled in the they got settled in the J tract. The neural crest cells from the central nervous system they are migrated during the development of the baby and these neural crest cells they migrated and they came to the GIT and in the GIT they form the entric nervous system no doubt now this entric nervous system is helping in the GI peristalsis now what happens for example if there is a defective in neural crest cell migration okay from the central nervous system there are these cells called as the neural crest cells they will migrate and they will come down to the GIT they will settle down in the GIT they will form the enteric nervous system which helps in the peristalsis GI motility now if there is a defective migration for example let's take one area see there is this one part of the GIT right now I am showing you all you all guys can appreciate what, which part of the GIT I am showing see this is the ascending colon this is the transverse colon and this is the descending colon a part of large intestine I am showing now I am just taking this one segment now in this one segment of GIT there is or I can say there are no neural crest cells the neural crest cells didn't came there now that is the part of GIT where no ganglionic cells are present now what are these ganglionic cells the ganglionic cells are nothing but the entric nervous system that part of the GIT where the entric nervous system is absent so I am calling this segment I am calling this segment as a ganglionic segment the nerves are not there now just tell me think logically and tell me if this segment is not innervated by neurons because of the defective neural cell migration can peristalsis happen in this area peristalsis is not going to happen J motility is not going to happen now if motility is not there means all the food where it will accumulate all the food is coming the food is coming to the proximal segment and it's getting accumulated now food have to move to the forward direction right food have to move for sure now to move the food what the proximal segments will do proximal segments are contracting so much so powerfully every day to push the food forward so what happened to the proximal segments the proximal segments have undergone hypertrophy okay the proximal segments have undergone hypertrophy to the like you know proximally to the a ganglionic segment see this red color segment is a ganglionic segment the proximal segment have undergone hypertrophy to push the food in forward or anti-grade direction so what is this condition called as this condition is known as Hirsprung disease please concentrate on the image guys pathological image where the colon got so much hypertrophy this hypertrophy is because of accumulation of the food in the proximal segment to push the food forward the proximal segments have become hypertrophy why all this problem came it's because of the defective in neural crest cell migration to the GIT leading to a segment called as a ganglionic segment whenever there is an aganglionic segment the disease is called as Hirsprung disease okay so some basic integrations with the pathology now after this I have already taught you entric nervous system it have 100 million neurons as it's having so many neurons we are calling it as little brain okay now what happens like you know whenever there is sympathetic activation in your body how your sympathetic nervous system is going to affect your GIT see whenever sympathetic nervous system is there do you need a digestive process when sympathetic nervous system is activated just tell me whenever you are like you know you, you are in a fear situation okay whenever a dog is behind you or whenever a lion is behind you now in that conditions you need to take a flight or fight reactions now in, in that situations do you really need GIT activity definitely not so whenever sympathetic nervous system is activated your GI motility is going to go down your GI secretions are going to go down and parasympathetic activation parasympathetic activity means the person is absolutely relaxed that's the time for the digestion to happen that's the time for the peristalsis to, to happen so parasympathetic nervous system increases the GA motility increases the GA secretion sympathetic nervous system on contrary decreases the peri uh, peristalsis and decreases the GA secretions now having said that let's discuss about the GA secretions see 
in your total GIT tract, okay, in your entire GIT tract, there are many, many secretions which are getting produced. You can ask me, what are these secretions? Starting from the mouth, we are having saliva. And there is some secretion which is happening in your stomach, which is called as the gastric secretions, including the acid. And liver is going to produce the bile. Pancreas is going to produce the pancreatic secretions. And intestines are going to produce the succus entericus or intestinal juice. So there are many, many secretions which are getting produced, no doubt. Okay. And like, you know, very uh, mucus secretions, alkaline secretions are going to be produced in the duodenum. So there are different, different types of secretions. If you totally count them, all these secretions will account for how much volume? Okay. See, it's almost 9 liters. 9 liters of secretions are going to be happening every day in your GAT. In a 24 hour span, 9 liters are getting secreted in your GAT. But out of these 9 liters, almost 8.8 .8 liters, which means almost 99%, almost, okay, 98 to 99% is getting reabsorbed back. Okay. Almost most of the secretions are getting reabsorbed. Otherwise, if all the secretions are coming out, if nine nine liters of secretions are coming out, the person will the person will suffer with the diarrhea and he will die. Okay. So, out of this nine liters, eight point eight liters are getting reabsorbed. Only two hundred ml is lost in the feces. Having said that, most of the secretions are getting reabsorbed. In which part of the GIT? In a part called as jejunum. Most of the students will make a mistake here. They will think most of the water is getting reabsorbed in the colon. No. Most of the water reabsorption happens in which part of the GIT? In the jejunum. Jejunum is coming under large intestine or small intestine? Small intestine. Duodenum, jejunum, ileum. After stomach, you will be having duodenum. So, duodenum, jejunum and ileum are the parts of small intestine. And most of the secretions are reabsorbed in the jejunum. Now, Please concentrate here guys, I have already taught you what are the GA secretions. GA secretions are including saliva, gastric acid from the stomach, pancreatic enzymes from the pancreas, bile from the liver and intestinal enzymes or succus entericus from the enterocytes from the intestinal glands. Now, let us talk about the most acidic secretion and the maximum secretion. Guys, out of that 9 liters, the maximum contributor is coming from the stomach. What is the secretions which are happening in the stomach? Gastric acid, right? HCL. Now, that's the that's accounting the major proportion. So, maximum secretions, maximum J secretion is what? what? Not the saliva, not the pancreatic enzymes, not the bile, not the succus centricus. So, maximum quantity of the J secretion is coming from the stomach. That's nothing but the acid. And one more important point is this acid is having the most acidic pH. The most acidic secretion which happens in your GAT is the acid in the stomach. The pH will be somewhere around 1.5. 1.5 means very, very acidic. Okay. Lower the pH, more the acidic nature. So, gastric acid is a maximum secretion as well as it's having the maximum acidic nature. Okay. Now, you know what is the maximum secretion and maximum acidic nature. Both are HCL, no doubt, gastric acids. Now, which secretion in your GAT is having highly alkaline secretions, highly alkaline secretions? Most of the students will think the pancreatic secretions are highly alkaline, but answer is not. It's the duodenal secretions or the burner gland secretions. Guys, please concentrate. The most basic secretions are produced by glands called as Brunner glands. Okay, Brunner glands. Now, what are these Brunner glands? Brunner glands are the mucus producing glands in the duodenum. Okay, Brunner glands are the mucus producing glands in the duodenum. Now, just think logically guys. Where acid is getting produced? Highly acidic pH. Where acid is getting produced? Acid is getting produced in the stomach. Now, if all the acid... If it comes into the duodenum, duodenum will be destroyed, right? In the stomach, it's having a proper mucosal lining. So, there is no problem for the stomach. Acid cannot do anything to the stomach. But if such a highly acidic secretion from the stomach, if it enters into duodenum, what happens? Duodenum is under attack. Duodenum is under threat. Now, duodenum knows what to do. Now, duodenum is producing more alkaline secretions because these alkaline secretions will neutralize the upcoming acid. 
okay so duodenum it have brunner glands now these brunner glands are producing secretions which are highly highly in in concentration of bicarbonates so because of this bicarbonate concentration it is its ph is 8.9 which means highly alkaline secretions okay guys we have discussed all the basic points now what we will discuss is we will discuss individually important points about the saliva salivary glands after that we will discuss what happens in the stomach how gi uh, how gastric secretions are going to happen how digestion happens in the stomach after that uh, what is bile how uh, digestion happens with the pancreatic enzymes we will we will see subsequently hope the video is helpful thank you